Hello, everybody. Today we are continuing on with our introduction into the mole. Remember that in our last video, we learned how to convert between atoms of a substance to moles of a substance, and we learned what a mole was. And that all goes back to Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So now we're adding another piece to that, and we need to go over some more mole facts. So number one, like why is the mole important? I'm not sure if I stressed this enough in the last video. The mole is important because it allows chemists and scientists and everybody like us here in class to work with the subatomic world. So meaning that super, 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 super tiny, like atoms, protons, etc., with macro world units. So macro means large. So basically in that last video, remember we talked about how the atoms are so, 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 so small that we need a unit that's comparable so that we can deal with like two moles of something instead of 9.89 times 10 to the 23rd dozen molecules, you know? So the mole helps us to use real normal sized units and amounts. And we learned, right, that any one mole of any element, compound, ion, whatever, it contains the same number of particles as one mole of any other substance. The keyword here is particles. That's what we learned about with Avogadro's number. Every time we have one mole of something, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that item. But atoms are all different sizes. We learned in the last unit about atomic radius. All of these atoms have different sizes. So even though one mole of something is has the same number of particles as one mole as another item, the masses of those substances are different because the masses of the individual atoms are different. So in this video, we are going to learn about something called molar mass, i.e. the mass of a mole of a bunch of different substances. So what is molar mass? Like I said, it is the mass of an element or a compound in one mole. A mole of water, I have X number of grams in that one mole. And we write that as like some number, G slash MOL. So if we put that in a conversion factor, it would look like this. Just like when we had density units, we had grams on the top and milliliters on the bottom. Now we have grams per mole, grams over mole, molar mass, molecular weight, atomic mass. Like you're going to hear a lot of those terms thrown around. It all just means how much mass is in one mole of the substance. The masses listed on the periodic table are the element's molar masses. So, for example, hydrogen, hydrogen's molar mass is 1.01 grams per mole. That's how many grams are in one mole of hydrogen. And usually we're going to write this to the hundredths place, meaning that second decimal place. Your periodic table, if it's the one that I provided for you, should already have that rounded. If you're using a different resource or you have an app or website that you've been using, make sure that you round your molar masses to the hundredths place. And then molar mass is summative, meaning if each element has a mass, then if we have a compound, the mass of the compound is equal to the sum of all of the masses that make up that compound. So let's do some examples. How do we calculate molar mass? Well, if we have an element, we don't have to do any calculating. All we need to do is look at the periodic table. The periodic table, the molar mass of helium is listed. It's 4.00. Then we just add units, grams per mole. Done. That's the whole question. What is the molar mass of helium? Four. Beautiful. Well, what is the molar mass of potassium? Again, we just need to look at the periodic table and we just need to write it down. 39.10 grams per mole. You'll notice that potassium has a much higher molar mass than helium. That's because potassium has 19 protons um, a bunch of neutrons, around 20 neutrons, whereas helium only has two protons and two neutrons. 
So it's a totally different atom, and that's why their masses are very different. But now what if we had a compound water we know is H2O. So if I want to calculate the molar mass of water, what I need to do is calculate hydrogen and oxygen, and then I need to add those up. So as we can see in the compound or in the formula, we have two hydrogen atoms and we just have one oxygen atom. So now we need to look at the periodic table, which says that one hydrogen atom weighs 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And one oxygen atom weighs 16.00 grams per mole. Well, two times 1.01 .01 is 2.02 .02 grams per mole and 1 times 16 is just 16. So now what we add up is 16 plus 2.02 .02, and you get the total molar mass of hydrogen to be 18.02 grams per mole. And that's how we calculate the molar mass of water. Let's do another compound so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Well, what is the molar mass of magnesium bromide? That's the name of that compound, MgBr2. So we need to know the individual masses of both of those. Well, we only have one magnesium. So that's easy. We just pull up magnesium on the periodic table. It says 24.31 grams over moles. All right, but bromine, now we have two bromines shown there in the formula. So whatever it is, we need to do two times that molar mass. So the molar mass of one is 79.90 grams per mole. So two times that in your calculator, two times 79.90 is 159.80 grams per mole. And we're going to take that number and add it up with the magnesium. And so total, when we combine those, we're adding the 24.31 and the 159.80. And we get a total molar mass of 184.11 grams over moles. Now that's how many grams of magnesium bromide there are in one mole of magnesium bromide. What if I have something that looks like this? All right, this is called calcium and nitrate. And you'll notice that there are parentheses in my compound here. Um, and this is something that we've learned about in math class before. What does it mean if we have a number that's on the outside of parentheses? We need to distribute that. So what it means is that this two distributes to everything that's inside the parentheses. So if I want to know, well, how many of each element do I have here? I clearly have one calcium, right? It doesn't have anything. It doesn't have a subscript. It doesn't have parentheses. We don't have anything going on here. But we also have nitrogen and we have oxygen. Now, because this two distributes to the nitrogen, I have two nitrogens, okay? This two also distributes to the oxygen, but I already had three oxygens. So now I have three oxygens times two. So total, I have six oxygens. So when I calculate my molar mass here, I have to be very careful um, about multiplying all of these things together. So calcium's easy. It's just 40.08 grams per mole, nitrogen two times 14.01 grams per mole is 28.02 grams per mole. All right, and then oxygen is six times 16.00 grams per mole. So we need to put that one in the calculator. Six times 16 is 96. 0 0.00 grams per mole. And that just tells me the masses of those individual components. Remember, I still need to add up all three of these numbers to get my overall molar mass. So 96 plus 28.02 plus 
0.08 gives me a total molar mass of 164.10 grams per mole. Remember that we need to go to that hundredths place, so that's why I included the zero there. All right, so that's how we calculate molar mass. Now, if you want to pause the video or rewatch that section just on how to calculate molar mass, I recommend that because now we're going to apply molar mass because what we have here and what we've been working with is unit conversions and dimensional analysis. So what we want to be able to do is use molar mass as a conversion factor. And what I mean by that is, well, what if I want to know how many grams there are in some number of moles? We can set up a normal unit conversion. So I'm starting with 1.450 moles of helium, and I want to convert that to grams. So I want to know how many grams of helium I'm with, or I end up with. So just like normal, we write the unit that we want to cancel out of on the bottom, moles of helium, and the unit that I want to go to on the top, grams of helium. What you'll notice is that now I have grams on the top and moles on the bottom. Grams over moles is molar mass. So what I need is the molar mass of helium. Good thing I have my periodic table and I can look up the molar mass of helium. Molar mass of helium is 4.00 grams in every one mole. Remember, the definition of molar mass is the grams of the substance in any one mole. The so one always goes with moles. And then once I fill my conversion factor in, this is just a normal unit conversion, and I solve by multiplying across the top and dividing by stuff in the bottom. So I do 1.45 times 4, and we get... 5.8 grams of helium, but I have to deal with sig figs. 1.450 has four sig figs, so I'm going to have to add two zeros at the end in order to get my sig figs to match up, and then you end up with 5.800 grams of helium. That's how many grams are in 1.45 moles of helium. Let's do another one. In this example, I have 2.4 moles of sulfur, which is S. And again, I want to know how many grams that is. So I want to end up with grams of sulfur. So I'm setting up my unit conversion. The unit that I want to cancel out of goes on the bottom. The unit that I'm going to goes on the top. And again, I've got grams over moles, so I can use the molar mass from the periodic table. The molar mass of sulfur is... 32.06, that's how many grams are in one mole. So to solve, again, I'm just multiplying across the top. And when you multiply that out, you get 76.944 grams of sulfur. But we only get two sig figs. So my answer, once that nine rounds up the six, is 77 grams of sulfur. Now, this time I have a compound, so things might get a little bit different. It says, what is the mass? So what is the mass? That means that tells me that I'm gonna solve for grams of 4.5 moles of NaF. Well, I'm gonna still set up my conversion, 4.5 moles of NaF. I want to convert that into grams of NaF. So I'm setting up my conversion, moles of NaF, sodium fluoride goes on the bottom, and grams of NaF goes on the top. I know that a 1 will always go with moles, so now the question is, what number goes on the top? And I'm going to need to calculate the molar mass. So over on this side, I'm going to need to figure out, well, what is the mass of one sodium, which is 22.99 grams over moles. Oops, that's a nine. And then I need the mass of one fluorine, which is 19.00 grams over moles. So I need to add those together. And that will give me 41.99 grams over moles. 
So that is now what goes on the top of my conversion factor because that's the molar mass that I just solved for. And then again, it's just solving like normal. You multiply that number for molar mass by 4.5 and you get an answer, 188.955 grams of sodium fluoride. But sig figs only get two of them. So one, two, this eight rounds that eight up, the 190 grams of sodium fluoride. Remember that zero doesn't count because there's no decimal. All right, this page, it's a little bit different. I'm gonna do the first one as an example for you, but then I want you to do the second two on your own. So let me go through this first example. Here, I'm starting in grams and I'm gonna solve for moles. So when I set up my conversion, 15.3 grams of lithium. When I convert that to moles of lithium, it's going to be the opposite of what we did on the previous slide. So grams of lithium ends up on the bottom and moles of lithium ends up on the top. But it's still molar mass. It's still grams and moles. So I still put a one next to moles. And then on the bottom, I still just put the mass of lithium, which is 6.94. Now, instead of multiplying, I end up having to divide this 15.3 times one is 15.3. And then you divide that by 6.94 and you get with sig figs 2.20 moles of lithium. So there's an example of going the opposite direction. But I want to see if you can make that work on these next two examples. So go ahead and pause the video, and then we will see how you do. All right, so there are the answers for five and six. For five, I only just had to plug in the molar mass from the periodic table for sodium and then divide like normal. But on six, I actually had to calculate the mass of ammonia is what NH3 is called. So you have the one nitrogen plus the three hydrogen, um, and then you solve by dividing. This one was tough with sig figs because you end up with 70.4 in the calculator, but that four can't round up the zero. So that has to go away, but somehow we still need to keep two sig figs. So you can either add a decimal at the end, but that's kind of, um, weird looking. So the other answer is to put it into scientific notation, 7.0 times 10 to the, that's a one, first moles of ammonia. So again, if this was troubling for you, I want you to rewatch the video and definitely get on office hours on Wednesday so that we can talk this through because it's a really important topic for all of us. And we will be using this next semester Everything with molar mass and Avogadro's number is super important for next semester. So please, 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 please ask lots of questions. I want to make sure that you guys get squared away before the end of um, before the end of the semester. All right, guys, this was the final lecture of the semester. Hope it was a good one. I will. I look forward to hearing from you soon.